Hello, my name is Rajit Sandhu, and today I'll be going over the eligibility submittal process using OPSC online. Today's topics include a brief overview of OPSC online, how to navigate through the eligibility dashboard, an in-depth walkthrough of eligibility application submittal process, what the required documents for eligibility applications are, and we'll be going over application versions and district eligibility baselines. If you're new to the SFP program, shown on your screen are our paper applications for eligibility submittals. Before a district can submit a funding application for new construction and or modernization programs, the district must submit an application to determine eligibility for funding. Eligibility applications must be submitted prior or concurrently with funding applications. And, el and eligibility forms include the Form 5001, 5002, and 5003. OPSC Online was designed to rec replicate the paper applications and to capture data. We are actively working to enhance users' experiences and plan to incorporate help text fields within eligibility applications in the future. Today's presentation is intended to show users what it's like to use OPSC online and will not go over specific instructions tied to modernization and new construction eligibility applications. If you are new to the SFP program, we recommend downloading the forms, which include uh, instructions, on how to complete modernization and new construction eligibility establishments and adjustments. A link to the form can also be provided on your, um, will also be provided on your screen. So what is OPSC Online and why use it? OPSC Online is our new paperless application process, which allows users to electronically submit SFP applications and eliminates and it eliminates the need for hard copy submittals. Its purpose is to retain and store data so that we can move towards a more automated process of submitting SFP applications. The goal is to have OPSC applications self-populate on the based off of the data keyed in by school districts and project managers and um, OPSC has moved towards processing applications solely in OPSC online, and districts are encouraged to do the same. OPSC online allows district representatives slash superintendents to sign and certify two applications electronically. All users can track the status of their authorized school district submittals for both modernization and new construction on funding and eligibility applications. And you're able to see where your application is at in real time. Users, also users can also view baselines for both modernization and new, new construction eligibility and review any pending line adjustments to help gauge where district's eligibility is at. With OPSC Online, users can sign and certify to applications electronically, track the status of applications, add links and uploads, and view eligibility baselines and pending adjustments. Information in OPSC, um, information keyed into OPSC will be stored within your applications forever. And we're also actively adding features and making improvements to the system to enhance users' experiences. So how can users access OPSC? To access OPSC online, go to OPSC's website, click on resources, click on online application tools for school construction projects, click on OPSC online application, to be taken to the OPSC online application page. I've also added a link on this slide for your convenience. To get to OPSC online, you'll start off by going to OPSC's homepage at dgs.ca.gov/opsc. 
see. Click on resources. <clears throat> Click on online application tools for school construction. One thing I'd like to point out on this, state, uh, this page is the OPSC online user guide available for download with step-by-step -step instructions on how to use OPSC online marked in blue. Once you've downloaded the manual, click on OPSC online application link in red to be taken to OPSC online. You will be directed to the OPSC online login page as shown on your screen. Here, you use your credentials to sign in. So how do you obtain login credentials for OPSC online? Users must have OPSC online credentials to access their district's information. The login information for OPSC online is based on each user's unique email address. If you do not have an account, send a request by emailing OPSC online support at dgs.ca.gov or reach out to your county project manager for assistance. Along with the option of signing in, the login page allows users to reset their password, request a new account, and review the OPSC online user guide. Before jumping into the eligibility application submittal process, I wanted to briefly go over the types of user roles in OPSC online and the access granted under them. The tasks we are going over today are outlined in red. Note how anyone can view records, create applications, and submit or, and upload documents into OPSC online. However, only the district representative slash superintendent can electronically submit eligibility applications. In today's presentation, I will be logging into our test environment using the user role of a district representative slash superintendent and due to this, there may be some slight differences in what capabilities you may have when logging in. When you sign into OPSC online, you will be taken to your district's fundings, funding applications dashboard page. Users will only have access to view information for their authorized school districts. So if you work with multiple school districts, you will see funding applications for all of them on your funding applications dashboard page. School districts can review the status of their eligibility applications in real time. And application statuses will be updated accordingly as they are being processed by the assigned project manager of that application. Now let's briefly go over the types of, types of application statuses. Districts will see the following application statuses associated with their projects as they're being processed by OPSC. This allows districts to see in real time how far their application has been processed and what its current status is. Once an application has been assigned a project manager, your application status will be changed to OPSC reviewing. If additional information is needed, the status will be changed to a 15 or four day letter indicating the district needs to submit additional documentation in order to continue the processing of their application. You can learn more information on application statuses by watching last Friday's virtual workshop called Overview of OPSC Online, which can be found on our web uh, on YouTube. How to navigate to your eligibility dashboard. To navigate to your eligibility dashboard, select district in the upper right corner of your screen. Next, select the district's district whose eligibility dashboard you wish to review. You'll be taken to that district's eligibility dashboard page once you've clicked on the district of your choice. And you will always be taken to your funding applications dashboard page when you're logging in. To continue to your eligibility application dashboard page, 
Click on district in the top right corner of your screen. Next, select the district whose eligibility application you wish to review. And remember, users will only have access to their district's information. If you work with one or more school districts, please reach out to OPSC by emailing OPSC online support at dgs.ca.gov to gain access to those districts information. Once, you've, once you have selected the district of your choice, you will be taken to that district's eligibility application page. The eligibility applications dashboard allows users to create and review modernization and new construction eligibility applications submitted under a specific district. Users will have the capability to create, review, and submit eligibility establishments slash adjustments. And application statuses will be shown in real time. Your district's name and code will appear in the upper left corner of your screen and your district's modernization and new construction baselines can be accessed at any time under the View Baselines section. You can use any of the filters, filters to sift through your applications in ascending or descending order. Drafts created an error or are no longer needed can be deleted at any time. If you wish to delete a draft, you can do so by clicking on options and clicking delete draft. Applications submitted to OPSC cannot be Applications submitted to OPSC cannot be deleted. If an application was submitted in error or needs to be updated, contact OPSC to request the application status be changed to withdrawn or superseded, or project managers can also assist with determining which status is most appropriate for your submitted application. We recommend you always check your eligibility baseline before applying for funding. This is like checking your bank account before writing a check. So how do you view your district's eligibility baseline? So we're gonna first go over the steps of navigating to a district-wide new construction baseline. As stated before, the eligibility application screen also allows users to access district's new construction and modernization baselines under the view baselines menu. To view your to view your district's new construction baseline on a district-wide basis, click on district-wide under View Baselines. Once you click on the district, you'll be directed to the district's district-wide new construction eligibility applications page. Once you are on the district-wide eligibility application page indicated in red, You'll select the new construction, you'll select new construction under baselines. So select new construction. And you'll be taken to that district's district wide new construction baseline. A blank baseline indicates a district or site which has yet to establish eligibility, which is the case for our example shown on your screen. Once you've re finished reviewing your, your new construction eligibility, click on district to return to your eligibility application dashboard. Navigating to new construction high school attendance area baselines. For districts whose new construction eligibility is fire, filed under, under high school attendance areas, Select the appropriate high school attendance area whose new construction baseline you wish to review. So you'll do so under, uh, under baselines. Select the appropriate high school attendance area. In our example, we'll select the high school attendance area named Kennedy. Once your selection has been made, you'll be taken to the district's eligibility page for its corresponding high school attendance area. 
The name on your high school attendance area will be shown on the top left corner of your screen. Under baselines, click on new construction to view your high school attendance areas, new construction baseline. Your district's name, code, high school, attendant, high school attendance areas, associated name and number will be shown above the district's baseline on the upper left corner of your screen. Your baseline is like a ledger. Once a district has established new construction eligibility, it can draw down on its eligibility while making adjustments based on the projected enrollment each school year. The district's established baseline or its starting point appears above any, adjust, any line adjustments approved by the state allocation board. Before the established baseline, before the established baseline exists a ledger which indicates any line adjustments which have been approved by the state allocation board and provides districts their current eligibility. Any pending adjustments associated with applications currently being processed by OPSC will be listed under the pending baseline section at the bottom of your screen. We have no pending um, baselines in this example today, or in this example on the screen. Once you have finished reviewing your district, once you have finished reviewing your baseline, click on district to return to your district's eligibility application page. Now we're going to go ahead and navigate to an individual's individual school's modernization eligibility baseline. Now that we're back on the eligibility dashboard page, we can review modernization baselines. In most cases, you should be selecting district-wide when wishing to view your district's modernization baseline. Select district-wide as we are viewing a modernization baseline. Once your selection has been made, you'll be taken to the district's modernization eligibility, eligibility page. Once you are on the district-wide eligibility applications page indicated in red, you'll select the site whose modernization baseline you wish to review under the baselines section. Select your site. In our example, we'll be viewing the modernization baseline for Anaheim High. And once on the modernization baseline for your site, you'll see its information located above your baseline. Users can review their eligibility under the state allocation approved baseline section and pending adjustments not yet approved will, will appear under the pending baseline adjustments section located near the bottom of the page. Along with their pending line adjustments, users can also see what their estimated baseline will be if pending adjustments are approved. The status of an adjustment will allow districts to see what stage application adjustments are at during OPSC's review. Statuses will be similar to the ones you'll see on the eligibility slash funding application dashboard, and you can filter your adjustments as you please. Once you have completed the review of your moderniza modernization baseline, click on district to return to your district's eligibility dashboard page. Now that we've gone, uh, gone over viewing district baselines, we'll move on to how new construction establishments and eligibility applications are submitted in OPSC online. Rules for establishing new construction eligibility are written in SFP regulation sections 1859.30 through 1859.51. In order for a district to qualify for new construction eligibility, it must demonstrate a, a need to provide facilities for students that will be unhoused based on a five-year or 10-year projection of enrollment. 
New construction eligibility is the difference between the projected enrollment and the number of students that can currently be housed based on the district's classroom count. In this section, we'll learn how to create new construction eligibility establishment applications. While a district used to have to fill out three forms to complete a, complete a new construction eligibility establishment, OPSC Online seamless, seamlessly goes through all three of these forms and ends with only one certification section. I will take you through the process in the next few slides. And once we're back to the district's eligibility dashboard, you'll click on new eligibility application to create a new eligibility application. Note that OPSC Online's current function exists to capture data so that in the future, forms will pre-populate for the district's convenience. For this reason, school districts should use the projected enrollment calculator to obtain your projected enrollment when establishing and updating your district's new construction eligibility. I have added a link on this slide. After clicking on the new eligibility application button, you will be directed to the eligibility wizard the eligibility wizard requires users to fill out information on the establishment they wish to complete. We will complete a new construction establishment in our first example. Select establish new construction eligibility. Select whether the district is reporting on a district wide or high school attendance area basis. Pick your enrollment year. And lastly, add an application nickname that best suits your application. One, once all the information has been filled, you can click uh, continue to move forward. Information on your application and district will be located above in red. Required sections will be, which need to be completed will appear to the left of your elig under eligibility. And using the dropdown, select the choices which best apply to your district. Key in your enrollment data accordingly and scroll to the scroll down to complete the rest of your 5001. The projected enrollment calculator should be used to calculate your projected enrollment. For convenience, a link to the calculator can be found within your new construction eligibility establishment in part I of the 5001. By clicking on the link, users are redirected to the project enrollment calculator. <clears throat> now let's go over what the projected enrollment calculator is. By clicking on the link, users are redirected to OPSC's projected enrollment calculator. As stated, the project enrollment calculator should be used to calculate projected enrollment for your district's 5001 during new construction establishments and updates. The district will fill in the optional and required sections and click next page to continue. And the district will complete the applicable sections required for their enrollment projections per SFP guidelines. Scroll down and complete the remaining applicable fields to calculate your district's enrollment projection by clicking Calculate Projections. And the enrollment calculator will populate the district's enrollment projections, which will be keyed in into part I of your 5001 in OPSC online. You will then enter your results in part I of the 5001. And OPSC Online is designed to store data. Applications submitted by users will be retained online and will be accessible at any time. We plan to incorporate the projected enrollment calculator within OPSC Online and eventually have forms pre-populate using existing data and future enhancements. For these reasons, it is in the best 
For these reasons, it is in the district's best interest to submit eligibility applications through OPSC online and get a jump start on using the new seam seamless process. Once you've finished completing the section, click continue to move forward. Once you've completed your 5001 for your new construction eligibility, you'll move on to the next section to continue establishing your district's new construction eligibility. This next form is only completed once when establishing new construction eligibility for our district. You'll fill in your classroom inventory in part one of the 5002, and then the remaining fields will self-populate for the district's convenience. Grade out sections are automatically populated with the ability to edit these fields coming in the future. Once you have inputted your information on, for your 5002, you'll click on continue to complete your 5003. The 5003 is the last section needed to complete your new construction eligibility establishment. The district's 5003 will populate based off of the information keyed in both the 5001 and 2, thus calculating the district's establishment, new establishing the district's new construction eligibility on the district's behalf. No, you will not be able to move past this page unless there is a green check mark next to the completed form. An exclamation point means the information is incomplete. You can review or um, you can click on previous or hit continue to move throughout your application or simply click on exclamation points be taken to the section which needs to be updated. Once you've reviewed it, once you've received a green check mark on all fields, click continue to move to the certification page. On your screen, you'll notice the exclamation exclamation points have now been replaced with green check marks, indicating the required sections have been completed. If you've gotten to this uh, certification page and you're not the district representative slash superintendent, you can easily send a link of the drafted establishment by clicking copy link and sending a link via email. Once the district representative slash superintendents have certified to the information being keyed in, click continue. And under options located to your right, districts can duplicate drafts, delete drafts, upload documents, link documents, and preview eligibility forms with form instructions. Duplicated drafts can be created in scenarios where an error was made on a, a submitted form. By duplicating a draft, you can correct the error made on your previous form without having to enter in all the data again. Drafts created an error or are no longer needed can be deleted at any time. The copy link function allows users to easily send links to applications which may need reviewing or certificate or or needs to be certified too. And districts can download drafted or submitted eligibility forms by clicking on preview eligibility forms. By clicking on preview eligibility forms, users can download PDF copies of their applications along with form instructions to their desktop. You can upload files at any time as the option will always be available to the right within your application. Districts will have the ability to upload documents to eligibility applications in response to 15 or four day letters, which might um, may be sent to your district if additional information is needed while processing your eligibility application. Supporting documents required with your eligibility application submittal should be uploaded at this time. Required documents for new construction eligibility establishments include site diagrams for each site identifying all classrooms, classroom summaries at each site, 
as well as providing any additional documents needed in cases where a modified waiting mechanism, birth rate augmentation, or dwelling unit augmentation are being used when submitting new construction establishments slash adjustment applications. Districts will be able to individually label uploaded files as they please. Once a file has been uploaded, a description entered, you'll select the file type that best represents your document. You will click on, you will click upload to upload your file and you will get a successful uploaded notification as shown here to let you know your file has been uploaded. Once you have uploaded the necessary files, click done. Uploaded forms will be available for review under uploaded files. Along with, along with uploading files, districts also have the ability to add links to their applications. And links can be added to applications for larger files that can, cannot be uploaded, such as DSA approved plans and spec specifications. Though it OPSC online files do allow up to 35 megabytes. The link options allow districts to easily add a link to access the district's information. Please note links can become outdated, so when possible, upload your documents into OPSC online. To add a link to your eligibility application, click on link, click on the link icon in red. Enter in the information on your link and click add link. The text box will then disappear and you'll be taken back to the middle page of your new construction eligibility establishment application. Uploaded files and links to your applications can be viewed under the uploaded file sections within your specific eligibility applications. So how do you submit a new construction eligibility update? Oh, sorry about that. So submitting your new construction establishment. After loading the required documents, check the appropriate boxes to certify to the information being keyed in for your district's new construction eligibility establishment. Click Submit Paperless Application. Once submitted, you will get a confirmation page showing the successful submission of your new construction eligibility establishment. And once your, once your application has been submitted, you can click on district to return to your district's eligibility application dashboard. Once you've been taken back to your district's eligibility dashboard, You'll see that the submitted new construction, you'll see the new, uh, the submitted new construction establishment on your district's eligibility applications dashboard page. The establishment was submitted for the 2019-2020 school year. If districts needed to complete an adjustment to its new construction eligibility for the next school year, they could do so by clicking on the new el eligibility applications. And now we're gonna be going over the steps to update new construction eligibility. On the district's eligibility dashboard, click on new eligibility application to create a new eligibility application for your new construction adjustment. When creating a new construction adjustment, you'll select the adjustment to new constructions eligibility option once all the information has been filled in, you will click continue to move forward. When completing the adjustment to your district's new construction eligibility, an updated 5001 will be needed for the current school year. You will complete the 5001 based on your district's, based on your district and hit continue at the bottom of the page to move forward. You will then complete the certification information and hit continue. Note, you will not be able to move past this page unless there is a green check mark next to the completed forms. 
An, exclam an exclamation point means the information is incomplete and you can either click on the bubbles or click continue or previous to move throughout your page. You will upload any files or links under, under uploaded files and check the appropriate boxes and then click Submit Paperless Application to submit your new construction eligibility application. Once, on, once your application has been submitted, the following in, uh, notification will appear, letting you know of the successful submission of your eligibility application, and your status will be shown as submitted in green. And then again, just to be taken back to your eligibility, um, eligibility dashboard, simply click on district to return. So now we're gonna go ahead and go over submitting modernization establishments and adjustments. Rules for establishing modernization eligibility for a school site are written in SFP section 1859.60. Districts request modernization for a site by submitting the eligibility determination, Form SAB 5003, along with, the, along with the required documentation. For modernization eligibility, a gross inventory or snapshot of the site is determined, and all classrooms owned or leased by the school district on the site generating eligibility are counted per SFP Regulation Section 1859.61. So now we will create a Modernization Eligibility Establishment application. To create a Modernization Establishment for a specific site, click on New Eligibility Application. After clicking on the, on the new application, eligibility application button, you will be re redirected to the eligibility wizard. The eligibility wizard requires users to fill out information on the just establishment or adjustment they wish to complete. We will be establishing modernization eligibility for this example. Since this is a modernization project, you'll select district-wide, pick your enrollment year and input an application nickname and click continue to move forward. The district has the option to fill out either option A or B of the 5003 and choose which option best fits the district's needs based on the district's eligible classrooms located at a specific site. Grayed out fields automatically populate based on the information keyed in by users. And option B allows districts to use eligibility, eligible square footage or classrooms to determine what percentage of facilities are currently at age at that site and apply that percentage to its enrollment to generate eligibility. Once you have entered in your site's information, you'll select the preferred modernization option in the dropdown and hit continue. If you're keyed in the district, if you, you have keyed in the district for the 5003 and are not the district representative slash superintendent, you can easily click a link to the draft, drafted applications via email. The district representative slash superintendent should certify to, certify to and enter in the information on the certification page and click continue. Which will take you to your eligibility submittal page for your, um, your modernization establishment. On this page, you can, or on anywhere in your application, you can duplicate drafts, delete drafts, upload documents, link documents, and preview eligibility forms. Districts can duplicate drafts, deleted, deleted drafts, copy links, and preview eligibility forms. Duplicated drafts can be created when an error was made on this um, submitted form by clicking duplicate a draft 
you can correct the error made on the previous form without having to enter in all the data again. Drafts created in error or are no longer needed can be deleted at any time. And the copy link function allows users to easily send links to applications, which, which may need to be reviewed or certified too. Districts can also download drafted or eligibility drafted or submitted eligibility forms by clicking on preview eligibility forms. Files and links can be uploaded under fi uploaded files. To upload a file, click on upload file. Select your file, add a description and select the file type that best fits your file. Districts will be able to individually, individually label uploaded files as they please. The following documents must be included for your modernization establishment submittal. A site map and a site inventory sheet clearly labeling any classrooms and facilities with their associated DSA numbers, square footage, and age of the classroom. Once you have uploaded all necessary files, click Upload, and you will get a successful upload notification as shown on your screen, letting you know that your files have been uploaded. You'll click Done when, you're, um, when you've completed uploading all docs. Uploaded forms will be available for view under Uploaded, fi um, uploaded Files, and though OPSC Online allows users, to, um, allows users to upload documents 35 megabyte, up to me, uh, 35 megabytes, links can be added to um, applications for larger files. To add a link to your eligibility application, click on the link icon in red. Enter in your information for your link and click add a link. The text box will then disappear and you'll be taken back to the submittal page of your modernization eligibility adjustment application. Uploaded files and links can be found under the uploaded files section at any time. Once you've ensured the required docs have been uploaded for your application, check the appropriate boxes and hit submit paperless application. Once your application has been submitted, you can click on the district or you can click on district to return to your eligibility application dashboard page. Now we'll go over the process of completing a modernization adjustment for a site that's already been established. On your eligibility dashboard, click on new eligibility application. After clicking on the new eligibility application button, you will be directed to the eligibility wizard. The eligibility wizard requires users to fill out information on the establishment or adjustment users wish to complete. Select the, the application type, in this case, adjustment to modernization eligibility will be selected. Since this is a modernization project, select district wide pick your enrollment year and input an application nickname. And once all the required fields are completed, you can click continue to move forward. For modernization updates, the 5003 needs to be completed. Districts have the option to complete either option A or B and choose which uh, option best fits their needs. Option B allows districts to use eligible square footage or classrooms to determine what percentage of facilities are currently of age <clears throat> at a site and apply the percentage to its enrollment to generate eligibility. Once you have entered in your site's information, you will select the preferred modernization eligibility option in the dropdown and click continue. <clears throat> The district representative or superintendent should fill out the certification page and click continue. 
and files and links can be uploaded at any time. As with the previous eligibility applications, you will be able to upload any files needed um, and upload any documents. And they will always appear under uploaded files. Once the docs slash links have been uploaded, check the appropriate boxes and click Submit Paperless Application. You'll be taken to the application submittal page where you'll see that the application was successfully submitted to OPSC. And once you've confirmed the submittal of your application, you can sim simply click on district to return to your eligibility applications dashboard page. You will be able to view your district's modernization update once back on your eligibility applications dashboard. And, be, and before we open up our questions and uh, answer question, there are some upcoming trainings that may, may also be, you may also be interested in. Please join us for our future workshops with, where in-depth walkthroughs will be completed of the following. Funding applications and OPSC online, the priori priority funding process, and lastly, the reservation of funds process for career technical education facilities program. Our contact information is as followed. With a link to your county specific project managers included on the resources slide. Links to useful resources referenced throughout the presentation can be found here. And, and I just wanted to thank everyone uh, very much for joining us in today's virtual presentation. And we're going to open up the floor to any questions you may have. 